now coming to the third noble truth or uh, in the chain of understanding of uh, uh, the moral life of a human being. Uh, the Buddhists have found, uh, have claimed that well, life is full of suffering and then we came across the first two noble truths. Now, the third noble truth states uh, um, almost an uh, ontological claim that uh, if you look at the slide when it says the third noble truth, what it is, well, the third noble truth claims that uh, since suffering is caused it can be eliminated by eliminating its causes. Now, this seems to be a fairly uh, uh, obvious simple claim perhaps, that when we talk about, well since suffering is caused, it can be uh, 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 eliminate its causes and eliminate suffering. What is the uh, profoundity of such a claim, or what is the uh, need of regarding it as one of the third noble truth, or one of a noble, or uh, one uh, regarding it as a noble truth? Well, first bringing suffering into the chain of uh, causality, that well, suffering is no fatalistic accident, Fatali uh, uh, suffering is no gift of chance, and that uh, there is a way out of suffering. And because, how do you understand that, with the ontological claim as well, suffering is in the causality chain. So, if you eliminate it co its causes, you eliminate suffering. Now, uh, in contrast, a fatalistic world view would say that well, uh, uh, um, could could say that suffering is an inevitable part, or is a gift of chance, and there is nothing one can do about it, and that brings about a sense of randomness in in human life. But uh, here, uh, the Buddhist claim is very very fundamentally very uh, 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 strong that uh, suffering is in the domain of causality, and if you do uh, el eliminate the causes, you eliminate suffering itself. So, it is not that suffering is uh, a gift of chance, or that it comes about uh, randomly, or it is uh, uh, inevitable. So, it is, it can be uh, evaded, or taken care of. Now, uh, the fourth noble truth talks about, the fourth noble truth. And describes the path for the to the elimination of suffering, or what is uh, 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 in Buddhist terminology called nirvana, the path to nirvana, and it is called the eightfold path. Now, what about the eightfold path? About the eightfold path, or it is also known as the uh, Ashtanga Marg. I think. Ashtanga Marg. Now, this eightfold path, we'll uh, talk about well first. Uh, let me list it down, then I will have a brief glimpse over it. Write, speech, write, action, write, livelihood. right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, followed by right views, and finally, the eighth 
other one is here of right uh, resolution. So, uh, the first three either to conduct, then to discipline and finally, to knowledge and wisdom. So, these are the eightfold paths that the Buddhists suggest one has to follow. It is about the right speech, right action, right livelihood. Uh, so, this is about how one conducts oneself through life. So, speech, action and livelihood, about disciplining, which is a mental phenomena. So, uh, it is about making the right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration. It is about right views and right uh, resol uh, resolution or having the right uh, resolve. Now, uh, this is finally, what leads to, according to the Buddhists, what they have termed as the Nirvana. So, that is uh, basically sums up, what uh, the Buddhist ethics uh, briefly puts forth. Now, we are going to talk about Jaina ethics. Now, uh, we have just talked about, uh, in the earlier classes about Buddhist ethics, and now we are going to talk about Jaina ethics. This is in no way an exhaustive or a detailed uh, view of uh, uh, Jaina ethics, but just a uh, brief overview of Jaina ethics, as a part of the Indian ethical tradition. Uh, if those who are interested, are welcome to go ahead and read more about it. But now, most people who have studied in India, are familiar with, uh, uh, or in the Indian subcontinent, or those who have taken interest in uh, history of the world, or religions, or the Orient, have come across Jainism, both as a religion, and as a philosophy. Sim similarly, Buddhism has been both a religion, and a philosophy. Uh, now, we have come across the tenets of these uh, uh, religions, or philosophies, in uh, uh, elementary forms, or in basic forms, in uh, uh, various uh, books that we might have studied, or uh, information that we have come across. Now, let us make something, uh, are these, uh, I am sure many of you must be wondering, th that are these tenets practical? Why are we talking about it? Are these, do these actually connect to the world out there? I mean, these are historical tenets, and uh, uh, say something like, right uh, uh, action, truthfulness, that well, one should always utter the truth. Perhaps, these have become, uh, not just out fashion, but these have become difficult to hold uh, uh, practices in the world out there. Uh, where are we connecting, and what are we talking about? Well, for one, let us have a charitable, uh, let us open up our minds, let us have an empathetic uh, reading of these uh, philosophies and religions. Let us imagine a time, when Buddhists and Jains, uh, the Jain religion and philosophy came up. Now, in that time, de depending on the context, these religions evolved, or these philosophies evolved. Now, in these uh, uh, ethical code of, uh, in, in these philosophies, ethics was not an isolated uh, conduct that uh, took place. Now, in these times, religion or f uh, 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 philosophical understanding of religion, or the way of living, was centered around uh, uh, one's uh, philosophical, or metaphysical, or religious beliefs. Contrast it with today. Uh, today, we are, uh, uh, the center of our life is perhaps, for many of us, is occupied by the profession, uh, they carry forward, or the, uh, their means of livelihood. And religion, or other beliefs form to be a part, or, or a, a, a supplement to the life that they lead. Now, this was not, uh, perhaps not the case, in the times that these religions, and philosophies evolved. This was a time, when uh, livelihood was, uh, perhaps, uh, 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 a pursuit necessary, and there was uh, affluence enough, not to worry about, or uh, hoard and save for the future. But, uh, the emphasis was to live the right kind of life. And therefore, 
uh, uh, the entire thrust of the intellectuals then was on discerning religion, philosophy, metaphys metaphysics and the fundamental nature of the world and then having a code of, uh, 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 a code of uh, uh, living, which will ultimately get what one wants to get and which was uh, um, perhaps liberation in various uh, uh, terms as it is known. Today, we find this difficult, today we find this difficult, today we are talking about it almost like an object in the museum uh, of, of what is Jain ethics, what is Buddhist ethics. Now, uh, for somebody suppose, even let us imagine has been transposed from that time to this time, will be very curious and uh, amused, if not hurt or uh, with this deep sense of wronging or maybe a pity for people like me and uh, uh, us, who are uh, trying to have a textual understanding of uh, uh, Jain ethics or Buddhist ethics. Because for them, ethics was not something, uh, which is to be listed down as a law code, and to be followed, but it naturally stems from one's metaphysical beliefs, religious practices and philosophy of living. Now, in such a situation, where uh, 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 trust levels were perhaps so high, that uh, uh, uttering the truth was not a, uh, a miraculous expectation. Whereas, perhaps today, um, if somebody says that, well I shall only speak the truth, well one would perhaps land into a lot of trouble very soon, uh, from the time one makes that resolution. Of course, this is not to disappoint uh, the uh, truth speakers, or not to say that all of us are uh, liars, but even our etiquettes, our uh, uh, wishes also, have a certain level of uh, implicit uh, inaccurateness. So, like when we say thank you, or we, when we wish somebody a good morning, do we really wish, uh, that the person has a good morning, or we are really grateful, or uh, well that is a question I leave on you to delve. So, coming back to why we are talking about these things, is because we need to understand that, these ethics evolve in a time, and there are people today, and there are uh, places today, where they it is still trying to be practiced with the same spirit, as in which it evolved. So, it was a full package of living. It was not a one hour escape for uh, a capsule course, to, uh, get, uh, to, to uh, find out about the way of living. This is another way of living. This is a way of living, which is governed by these metaphysical doctrines, and uh, uh, religious practices that came along, and other things fade into the background. So, having putting in that uh, kind of a, uh, a, 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 a notice in your uh, minds, that I hope to elicit an empathetic understanding, or more accurately, an accu more, more uh, uh, open and understanding, or more contextual understanding of the ethics that we talk about. Now, uh, a little bit history about uh, uh, Jain uh, ethics, or what they know, is, which is known as uh, Jinnah, or the conqueror. Uh, Jains are the follower of Jinnah, or the conqueror, the victor. Now, uh, what did the conqueror conquer? Well, the conqueror did conquer, his lower self, and realize the higher self. So, when we talk about Jinnah, Jinnah is the one, or uh, are those, who have conquered, uh, their lower self. Uh, and, the higher self prevails. So, uh, this is what is uh, basically the etymological word of the uh, etymological meaning of the word Jinnah, or the one who has been victor or uh, victorious or conquered his lower self. Uh, Mahavir uh, or Vardhaman uh, is, is uh, perhaps known as the founder of Jainism, but which is not historically correct, because and uh, uh, Mahavir himself claims that Vardhaman is uh, uh, the last of the reformer of the previously existing creed of uh, Parshavnath. Uh, in fact, uh, Rishabh, 
uh, as uh, is known as the founder of uh, Jainism. So, uh, Jinnah was uh, uh, born um, in, in uh, 599 BC at Vaishali and he attained liberation uh, at uh, in 526 BC. So, that is a uh, little bit sketchy history about uh, uh, the Jains. Now, uh, well, what are the tenets of uh, Jainism? Well, first it says that, well, almost every thing is possessed of a soul. Every and that is, that is how, which many of you must have heard, uh, we come out to be, we, we see the uh, ex excessive uh, uh, stress on non-violence in Jains and uh, uh, the Jain philosophy. So, the claim that Jainas want to make is that, uh, uh, we, we do have, a, 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 so to say, a sticky material lower self. And our objective is that our higher self conquers our uh, sticky lower self. Now, let me put this in a little bit of perspective for uh, you to perhaps make a little more sense out of this. Because yes, uh, Indian philosophers do talk about self and a higher self and a lower self, and there is a lot of religion also talks about it. But well, uh, on the other hand, we have a dominant school of uh, freedom saying that let us be what we want to be, and uh, let us not. Uh, uh, let us not uh, uh, impose uh, morals and religions and philosophy and try to uh, try to uh, take control of people's lives because uh, after almost the scholasticism of the medieval times uh, we find uh, uh, this kind of rebellion to any established religion or uh, moral practices now let me put this question to you that uh, if any of you have been fond of classical music, both in the Indian or the Western tradition. Now, how have you uh, 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 been fond of this classical music? Probably, the answer for most of us, or most of the people who would be fond of classical music, is that, well, they have been trained in it. And perhaps, most of uh, uh, those who have not trained in it, do not have a liking for it or have not been able to cultivate a liking for it, and would prefer uh, 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 um, more contemporary, immediately appealing uh, music. But does that mean that uh, uh, classical music does not make any sense? Here is where is the, uh, 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 this is just being presented as an analogy, for you to perhaps make sense of it. Now, to experience, to give, uh, if, if, if what we call as freedom is giving oneself uh, uh, no uh, loading of uh, information or uh, uh, moral practices or religion or metaphysical beliefs then what takes over well if one has uh, 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 one could say that it is well the fundamental biological drives take over if one is not socialized if one is not moralized well one is free, well one is free, if one, the, the fundamental drives take over. So, either way, what is this thing called freedom? Is it just allowing, uh, not uh, loading any uh, information, and uh, onto the human agent, and uh, then seeing what the human being does, or allowing the human being to do what uh, he or she does, or what the notion of freedom that these uh, schools of philosophies and religions would say, just as classical music, that you need a certain amount of training to cultivate, or to understand, and thereof, to like, or to be in a position to like, or dislike such a uh, system. So, uh, it is natural, a, a child going to school would not like to study. Probably, most of us did not want to, uh, hated the school on the, on our first day, or maybe in our, even in our first year. And alphabets did not make any sense to us. We were just mugging up alphabets, without understanding them. Perhaps, there is and then we come to understand, uh, then we come across words, and then we come across sentences, and then we come across meaning. And then we are able to appreciate that, well, uh, the alphabets had to be uh, learnt, before one could make sense of its utility. So, uh, uh, like uh, classical music, like anything in life that requires a little bit of, or, 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 or subs, uh, substantial amount of training, to uh, 
understand uh, to understand or even have a chance to appreciate or to uh, dislike it rather than uh, judging it as it comes across to us. So, we do need to build our vocabulary to uh, appreciate or uh, critique uh, meaning and uh, language. So, thus uh, the uh, Jain philosophers or the Buddhist philosophers or this entire Indian philosophical tradition. In fact, uh, uh, even, even religious traditions world over would uh, uh, only be, it would only be fair in giving them a chance in trying to understand it and uh, then making a judgment on it, a judgment on it, than fundamentally rejecting it all. And therefore, maybe many countries in the world do provide some religious exposure to children in school, whereas some uh, countries would prefer that uh, uh, the children are not exposed to any uh, religion or moral sciences, and they develop on their own. So, these are two ways of understanding human nature, and it differs in the practices uh, uh, that come across. So, uh, for Jainism, freedom is the radical conversion of the inner man. I am here ex extensively taking the works of Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, in understanding the ethics of the Jains, in his classical uh, introduction to Indian philosophy, uh, which I think many, uh, you must read, if you are, uh, you would like to know more uh, about uh, Indian philosophy and its various schools. So, this conversion of man, that well, from the lower self, we get on to the higher self, that we need to conquer our basic desires, or we need to uh, move from uh, our, our basal fundamental selves to a higher self. It makes a very crucial assumption. Uh, and why morality is required? It uh, has, because it is again uh, intertwined with its, uh, uh, with its uh, 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 metaphysics and ontology. So, there is uh, karma or action, which is accumulates. So, the kind of karma one accumulates, karma or action, uh, simplistically understood, uh, gets, uh, uh, br brings forth tendencies or uh, fruits in one's own life or next life. And one's aim is to nullify the effect of these karmas and uh, attain liberation. So, uh, we, we, we need to uh, take care of the karmas that we are laden with, and uh, try to uh, restrain its effects, and then go ahead and uh, attain liberation. So, uh, the apparatus of morality is basically required to reform human nature, and prevent formation of new karma. So, now many of us must have heard in uh, school, the three ratnas, or the three jewels, that nirvana can be attained through. Now, what are these uh, three jewels, or three ratnas? These are, well, uh, for one, it is right faith, two is uh, right knowledge, and three is right conduct. So, what is basically means right faith is that faith in uh, Jinnah, or uh, and the leader, and the right knowledge is knowledge of his doctrine, and right conduct is following the uh, conduct. So, then uh, following the uh, conduct prescribed in the, uh, by the Jinnah. So, there is, a, they also have a men mention of five-fold conduct, which is one, non-violence, Well, uh, the uh, emphasis on non-violence non for Jainas is very, very uh, uh, fundamental. And many of you must have uh, uh, taken a look, or, or those who are familiar with Jain monks, would have seen uh, perhaps a Digambar or a Shvetambar. The Digambars are the ones, uh, uh, Jain monks who uh, are ascetics, who are in the nude, and Shvetambars are the ones that are clad in. Uh, uh, white uh, cloth. They seem to uh, have a, uh, uh, a cloth uh, wrapped around their 
uh, mouth when they are speaking or breathing also, because this uh, uh, supposedly prevents the destruction of uh, um, or killing of uh, or violence of uh, the various microbes that are in the air. And they uh, have extreme practices to prevent uh, uh, killing as much as or violence as much as possible. So, far uh, apart from non-vegetarian food, uh, they even try to go about their lives causing minimum damage to uh, uh, life or the world around them. Now, that perhaps, uh, many people have found difficulty following that well, life essentially breeds on life and we do find that well, no matter how much effort we make, we will uh, or, or the survival of a, an organism um, feeds on another organism or, or accidentally uh, requires the destruction of another organism. Now, to this I would like to say maybe a, uh, um, a more empathetic understanding of this giant way of living is that well, no matter perfection uh, ca cannot be achieved, but does that mean do we not even target perfection. So, as much as we can, let us be, uh, the Jainas would say that, let us be non-violent, that therefore, non-violence uh, uh, is, is uh, uh, res refraining from all violence and also being, uh, does not mean that just refraining from violence, but also uh, acts of positive kindness. Now, in the fivefold conduct, the second conduct that we talk about is charity and truth speaking. Uh, then there is honorable conduct, chastity in uh, word, thought and deed and finally, renunciation of all worldly desires. And now, these are fairly easy to understand, but they are perhaps very difficult to uh, 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 follow and that perhaps uh, brings in a sense of uh, uh, difficulty that uh, in, in the audience and in uh, people who are trying to explore or engage with Jainism is that uh, this becomes very difficult. But well, this is the fundamental now, if uh, the greater uh, uh, the reward, the stiffer the path. So, uh, these are uh, uh, conducts fairly simple, fairly obvious and fairly uh, 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 postulated by perhaps most of the religions and uh, um, uh, codes of conduct that and, but to follow it is, is this is the necessary path, which will be, the, uh, uh, which will get rid of our uh, bad karma and bring about. Uh, 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 the absence of any accumulation of future karma and that means the higher self conquering the lower self. So, uh, okay, I, I would like to, uh, many of you might be thinking that well, why this uh, 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 notion of uh, uh, nudity in, in uh, uh, Digambars. Uh, now, as Radha Krishnan puts it that well, nudity is getting rid of the final uh, uh, discriminationary sense that human beings have of, of shame, that well, uh, shame is uh, getting, getting a, a sense of discrimination, possession, a sense of uh, discrimination uh, between clothed and the unclothed. And therefore, we find uh, that even giving up clothes is giving that final sense of shame up and accepting uh, oneself as one is. Uh, the Jaina ethical systems are more rigorous than the uh, Buddhist ethical system, but there is a, a lot of uh, commonalities, but there are essential differences about it also. In fact, there are views that uh, uh, Jain, uh, the Buddha and the Jaina are uh, two interpretations of the same person. We shall not go into it, but historically they have been uh, documented as different figures and uh, with clear evidence of the same. Uh, concerning more about Jain ethics, we would also like to say that well, uh, what 
essentially Jain ethics wants us that well to overcome our desire for the things outside or external to us and this uh, uh, desire for things external to us bewilders us and the whole object of uh, uh, following ethical code of conduct or Jain ethics is to contain this bewilderment by refraining oneself from uh, uh, pursuing objects external to us and meditation is, is a uh, process that helps us in this. So, Jain ethics that way is very clear that well there is uh, uh, a, a clear cut uh, systematic uh, order of the world in which the harder the Jinnah has worked or the ascetic has worked, uh, he, he or she deserves the award uh, of uh, the negation of karma and the attain, uh, attainment of uh, Nirvana. It is not uh, and thereby this denies the notion of blessings or grace or any uh, 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 Puranic notion of God intervening to uh, forgive and uh, bring about uh, uh, or bring, bring, give a special boon or a shortcut to the uh, seeker on the spiritual path. So, for the Jains it is a very impersonal uh, moral order that uh, we uh, the, uh, the more dedicated and uh, doggedly the ascetic follows one's path is what uh, uh, naturally begets uh, the rewards of the path and there is no uh, special intervention or ex in that case. Uh, so, considering this, so uh, we have had a short talk on uh, Jainism and we would like to uh, I would invite others who would uh, like to read m uh, more or know more about uh, Jainism to go ahead with uh, Dr. Sarvepalli Radha Krishnan's introduction to Indian philosophy, from which the source of this talk has been taken, and uh, uh, explore it in its own detail and try to uh, get it, uh, get try to relate it to what today is. The Jaina community has been a rather small community, but a tightly knit community, and it does survive uh, in its practices. So, uh, we see that well Jaina ethics is kind of uh, uh, perhaps one of the most uh, toughest, one of the uh, toughest or uh, most austere forms of uh, uh, ethical practices subscribed, uh, and it does not uh, uh, count upon grace, blessing or a, any kind of a shortcut or intervention by gods to bring about uh, bring about um, uh, a special benefit to the seeker. It is simply the effort one puts in, the livelihood one follows, the dogged sticking to the conduct prescribed, that one uh, attains, uh, demolishes one's old karma or bad karma and creates none and therefore, leads to uh, Nirvana. <coughs>